In today's video, we're going to take a look at this non-contact liquid sensor, which means that it can detect the presence of water without actually touching the water. This is called the XKCY25, and we're going to be linking it up to ESP Home and Home Assistant. As you'll see in this video, there's lots of potential use cases for this. So let's take a look. So firstly, I'm actually going to talk about PIRs. PIRs are great for motion detection. They're not great for stationary people. MM wave sensors are good for detecting people and for stationary objects. But unfortunately, they do do false positives because if you've got something like a fan in the room, then it will detect that as motion as well. So one problem I want to solve with this device is detecting when my other half is in the bath because at the moment the light keeps turning off on her and she's not very happy about it. One of the good uses for these would be in a camper van or an RV, so you'd be able to detect the level of your clean water or even your dirty water, so you could see when you're running out of clean water or when your dirty water tank is getting full so that you can empty it. Also, you could use two sensors with the same ESP device, so we're going to look at that in this video, and maybe even three. A couple of outdoor uses for this would be detecting the level of the water butt so you know when that's getting full or empty. Maybe if you haven't got any drainage for your water butt then you don't want it to overflow or if it's getting empty then you know that you need to get the hose ready to water your plants. Another scenario would be using it as a rain sensor. So you could attach it underneath your guttering to detect when there's water or you could attach it even better to the downpipe so that as soon as it stops raining it wouldn't detect water on the downpipe and then you'd know that it's not raining anymore. It would probably be better there than under the gutter because under the gutter you might get some standing water. These devices will need to be permanently powered so bear that in mind when you're locating it somewhere. These sensors are also apparently waterproof so it should be good for things like a rain sensor outside. I wouldn't submerse it in water though but that kind of defeats the object of the device anyway. The way this device works is, is that it detects changes in capacitance, so when water's near it, the capacitance will change. This means that you can use it on most materials, but unfortunately you can't use it against metal. The response times of it are apparently 500 milliseconds, which I think is good for most situations. There's a potentiometer on the back so that you can adjust the sensitivity. There's also an LED light on the back, so this should come on when it's near water, which I think is good for troubleshooting, but otherwise a bit of a waste of power. Speaking of power, it uses 5 milliamps and the output can output a maximum of 50 milliamps. So a few other things to mention before we get into the wiring. It can detect up to 12 millimeters through a material, which I think is quite a decent amount. The voltage range is between 5 and 12 volts, although there is a 24 volt version as well. But we need to bear in mind that although it's between 5 and 12 volts, we need 3.3 volts on the output and the input voltage is the same as the output voltage. Thankfully, I've tried this with 3.3 volts and it seems to work totally fine. One final spec to note is that this comes in a PNP and NPN variant. I've got the NPN variant and this means that you've got a slight different configuration between the two and potentially different pins depending on whether you're using the ESP8266 or an ESP32. If you have the PMP version of this device, then I recommend using the ESP32 instead of the ESP8266. This is because you will need to connect it to the D0 pin, and this pin goes high on boot, which means that it would detect water even if there isn't water there every time the device reboots, which isn't ideal. So that's why I've gone for the NPM version. So now let's talk about the wiring of the device. So I've got one here and I've got it connected to an ESP8266 already. So on this device, there's a brown wire, there's a blue wire, a yellow wire and a black wire. We're not going to use the black wire. The black wire changes whether the output is high or low, depending on whether that wire is connected to ground or not. The brown wire is VCC, so that is the positive voltage, in this case 3.3 volts. The blue wire is the ground, and then the yellow wire is what you connect to a GPIO pin. I'm going to connect it to D1. So now we've got the wiring done, and I've created a device in ESP Home. If you don't know how to do this, then check out my beginner's guide to ESP Home. So let's press edit, and you can see here I've created a binary sensor. So we've got the GPIO platform, we've got it set to D1 pin, the mode is input, and also pull up is set to true. We've then got the name, and I've also set the class as moisture, so it shows as wet or dry in Home Assistant. 
I've also added this filter thing here. This is needed because otherwise it will show wet when it's dry and dry when it's wet. So just add this and it'll invert the input before it goes to Home Assistant. So now that we've done the wiring and set it up in ESP Home, let's plug it in and then try it out with a few different liquids. Now that it shows dry, let's put it against my hand as a test because the human body's got a lot of water. So there we go, wet, dry. So now we're going to try it on some different things. So I'm going to have some coke in here. I've got some milk here. I've got some water. I've got some sort of thick juice. And then I've got a ceramic cup which will fill with water as well. So testing the empty glass first. We can see that it says dry. Let's try the milk. So it shows dry here and then wet, dry, wet as soon as we get to there. So it's very close to the line where it activates as being wet. Now let's try the same with the water. So dry, wet is detected there. And you can see the LED on. Now let's try the juice. You can see that's also detected as wet all the way up to the top because it's full. Now let's try the ceramic cup. So you can see that's also detecting as dry as you would hope. Now let's put some water into it. And there we go, it's detected as wet. Now before we try the coke in the glass, I'm interested to try it on the metal can because it's not supposed to work properly on metal, so let's see. So it does detect it as wet, but whether it does it correctly when the metal can is empty, I don't know. Now let's try it on the coke can again now that there's some missing from it. So I think it's about up to here. So try and get on this coke can on top here, on this piece of metal. It's showing wet even though there's not any coke here. So that's evidence enough for me that it doesn't work on metal. Okay, well I think this test has shown that it works as expected. So it worked through ceramic okay, it worked through plastic, through glass with different liquids in it, and it didn't work on the metal. Now if we want to add a second one of these sensors to the same device, all we need to do is literally copy and paste this code and then change the pin number, which in my instance it's D2, and then change the name. Upload that to the device, and then we're good to go. We can now see that against the ESP device in Home Assistant, it shows water sensor one and water sensor two. So now I've connected up the ESP device to two of these using just a little breadboard. So now we can see that there's two sensors in Home Assistant, water sensor one and two. Now if I put my hand in front of this one, we can see that sensor two changes. And if I do this one, we can see one, sensor one changes. Now, if we do both, they should both go wet. And there we go. So you can see that you can hook up as many of these as you like, really, up to the number of GPIO pins you've got on the device. If you've got an ESP32, then that's quite a lot. You don't have to worry too much about how many you connect up to this device as long as you've got enough GPIO pins. Because these only use 5 milliamps and the voltage regulators on board these can do up to a maximum of 500 milliamps. So the device itself generally uses a maximum of about 100 or so when it's connecting to Wi-Fi. So you've still got 400 to play with. Let me know in the comments if you set one of these up and what you end up using it for. I'm really excited to get these set up permanently. Well, that's it for today. So please consider subscribing if you haven't already. So thanks until next time.